and welcome back to the worst War Machine channel on the internet. I'm Malorian, and it's time for another War Machine Weekly. Now, normally I do these on Thursdays, but I'm doing this one a day early because tomorrow's going to be crazy. Tomorrow is where we get that big 40-something page list of all the updates, and so tomorrow's going to be wild. So I want to try and get this one early. And the one that the patrons went for is the idea of using scenery as scenario. And I thought this was a very interesting th thing to cover. I'm really glad that my patrons actually went and voted for this one. And the reason why this actually came up is that one of my patrons, my, one of my overlords actually, Daryl, brought this article to my attention. Now, this article here is made by Disgruntled Wargamer. It's called Scenic Steamroller. I'll put the link down below. And it's a very fascinating idea. And I want to talk about it because this idea is interesting enough on its own. Also, it really goes around an idea that I've been thinking about for a while. And I think there's a good way these can come together. And so already here, Disgruntled Gamer uh, talks about how this is something that's a work in the progress. Uh, would have to be tested. You know, like this is kind of like just like an idea. Don't think that this is like a finalized thing that Disgruntled Wargamer thinks is ready for use right away. But uh, really the way that this works as is, is that first of all, there is no scenario on the table, right? You don't walk up and there's circles and squares and flags and, and all that type of stuff. They'll just be your terrain. And what you'd actually do then is take turns putting down markers. So there would be D3 plus two of these that they'd be having to be spreading out on there. And again, this is one of those things that could be like, could go more, could be less, whatever. But these could be tokens that are like, this is something that's scored by solo. This is something that's scored by a unit. This is blah, blah, blah. The normal things that you'd be saying as attached for your flags and your circles and your rectangles, but on this token that you actually put on terrain. And then you go and you play your game where you're trying to capture the terrain, not the actual circles and squares and flags and stuff like that. And the way that you actually score these is that you, if you're a solo, or if you're the warjack, you have to be, you know, in or touching that piece of scenario. So if you have a foot in a swamp, you're good to go. If you're a unit, only the unit commander matters. All the rest of the dummies can be running around. They don't matter. But that actual commander of the unit, that's the one that actually matters. It has to be in the actual piece of scenario. And then you play like a regular game, right? You start scoring on the second person's uh, second turn and so on and so on like normal. You're, you're scoring normally as per Steamroller, but the scenario pieces are the terrain and not the actual like circles and rectangles that we've been using for a decade or whatever it's been. So why is this important? Why is this something that we should be even thinking about? Well, one of the things that we would be wise to understand is that other games mock War Machine because of our scenario system. And why that is, is because if you look at some other games, you're actually trying to be doing some scenario things that might be making sense. Like you have to go and protect this, this character. You have to go and get these things off the board because you're trying to escape with them. Like thematic things like those, but if you're trying to do something with a singular piece, it'd be more like an objective. Something that you can really think in your head of like, this is like a control board. This is the rocket I need to capture. Something like that. But the problem is that when you have all these circles and rectangles on the table, is that they don't really translate to anything. And so when you are thinking of a movie where, you know, it's a big scene and they're trying to get this objective done where they're trying to do whatever. It's never like, oh, we got to go and stand in this general area, right? It's more so like, oh, we got to capture this bridge. We have to take out this building. We have to go and, you know, uh, hold this gate, whatever it is. It's, it's scenery based, right? It's something to do with actual pieces on there, not just like, general <laughs> circles and rectangles on the zone. And I mean, you could be kind of like put some of that in your mind, like, oh, this is important for some reason, but the, you really have to stretch yourself to try and imagine these things. And so the thing is, is like, you know, 
steamroller after steamroller after steamroller, they're all the same, right? You're always fighting over circles. You're always fighting over rectangles. It's like, oh, well, now it's a little bit moved. Oh, now instead of a rectangle, it's a circle. And I mean, to switch sides here, there's a reason why it's like that, right? It makes for a very balanced tactical game, right? There's different types of models and units, and it's important to have different sized types of things that they could be going for. And then you could be making a template for how the, the board should be looking, so that's fair on both sides. And then with this, you can have that very balanced game. It's all about balance and War Machine, making sure that you have this highly tactical, highly competitive uh, game that you could be playing. However, then going back to the other side of the argument, that's where that realism is lost because you're no longer trying to take the bridge. You're trying to put some dudes in this circle for whatever reason. And so if we could go and change and make it so that instead of going for squares and rectangles and circles, we're now actually going to actually like, oh, we got to capture this forest. You got to take this trench, whatever it is. Well, well, then all of a sudden those people that are having that argument is going to be forced to actually address that, right? Like next time that they say that, right? You could be like, well, no, it's actually changed now. Now we actually go and fight for scenery pieces, right? And so that's something that's important, right? The way that we interact with other communities, other games actually determines how we might have a chance of stealing players from them, or at least borrowing, right? There's nothing wrong if you're a person that plays <laughs> War Machine and Malifaux and 40k. You know, as long as we our community gets larger, hey, that's all we're trying to get here. And so we have to be very aware of that image and how other people are seeing us. The other thing too, and this kind of now falls in with what my other thought was around this, was that you can actually be using this to your own advantage as well. This is something where when I first saw this, I was like, ooh, this is a very good idea. So let's now quickly get to that and where moving away from what's in this here and where this idea came up for me. Now, when I got into War Machine, I never really thought negatively about any of these steamrollers. Sure, th this is the objective. Let's do it. I'd played many different scenarios over the years with, you know, 40K and fantasy and all that stuff. Lots of wacky things that we've done in that. And for this one here, I knew it was more, you know, trying to get that tactical balance. And I was cool with it. Never thought of a, another thing about it. Then I went and I started playing some X-Wing. And when you go and you play X-Wing and you get told you're on whatever table, you go there and it is blank. There is nothing on that mat. It is literally the players that bring their own terrain. Just like how you have to bring your own ships to go and fly around and shoot lasers. Pew, 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 pew. You need to bring your own terrain pieces that's going to be going on as well. And looking at this as a TO, it's like, that's so easy. You know, like normally as a TO for War Machine, I got to run around. I got to get all the mats out. I got to make sure that I get all the scenario out. Just perfect. Measure, 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 measure. Okay, now that that's out, put out all the terrain. I got to make sure the terrain's all balanced everywhere. Okay, whew, that's all done. No, it's not. Round two. Okay, scenario off. New scenario on. Balance the terrain again. Okay, now it's lunchtime. Now after, change the scenario. Oh my God, during lunch, they moved all the terrain to the side. Okay, fix the terrain again and compared to that to like these x-wing to's are like oh yeah, yeah yeah round three it's posted go on <laughs> you know like holy crow that's so lucky and so it made me think about like imagine a world where the player brings in their own terrain and i mean it could also be a thing where maybe the the players don't have to take on the expense of buying or preparing their own terrain maybe the to has some bins on the side and then the players grab from there whatever that's the details that doesn't matter but just the idea that i would not need to have to do that as a tournament organizer however let's look away from how lazy i can be as a to and actually think about how this could improve it for the players because because there's already a lot of tactical depth to this game. And one of the things that can really take away from that is just the luck of the table, right? Okay, well, oh, oh, I'm up against the Sloan gun line. Well, I really hope I get some forest. Nope, no forest. Well, I hope I got some cover. Nope, no cover. 
<laughs> you know, I guess I'm in trouble, right? You know, like things like this here where sometimes that terrain can be very, very uh, detrimental and deterministic. You just have no control over it. And I mean, you could do something where like, oh, if I go second, then I can get this. Well, first of all, you don't always win initiative. In fact, like half the time you shouldn't be winning initiative. And so it's not underneath your control. But also, sometimes there's just nothing that really helps you on the table, depending on what type of uh, TO you have and what their feeling is for how much line of sight blocking there should be, or just really the way that terrain should be in general. You just might be on a terrain that has nothing you need, and you are at a severe handicap based on what the terrain is on the table. So imagine this then. Imagine that that was no longer there, and that this game War Machine, that's supposed to be all about balance and using your intellect to beat your opponent, not random chance, also took that terrain part out. And now, when you're actually going and picking sides, you're really going and setting up the terrain first. Now, jumping back to that article there from Disgruntled Gamer, I feel this is the part that's missing, because I feel that that article was all about talking about that's already there, the TO did it type thing. But in my mind, this is something that the players would do. Again, either grabbing from the TO's bin or bringing their own. And now it's the thing where like, okay, what do you got? Oh, oh, so you got Sloan in your pairing. Okay, I see what's going on. All right, well, guess where this forest is going? Boof, right in the center of the table. And this does two things then. One, it's giving you that counterplay to be dealing with things like those big skews. And now that you know that your opponent has these easy outs, you're not going to be pushing those skews either, meaning that the game gets balanced overall. When the scenarios changed so that the objective was in every single scenario and could just be gotten for magic weapons, guess what we started seeing disappearing from the game? The magical skews, the incorporeal skews, right? Where people are like, oh, you don't have magic weapons? Guess you're in trouble because now guaranteed you're going to have those things, right? You used to see gremlin swarms everywhere. And in addition to things like, you know, infernals being a thing, that change in scenario was key in taking that skew outside and really just bringing more balanced builds into the game. So that is very important for what we're really trying to achieve in this game anyway. So... In my mind, there's two ways that you could then go about it. One, you would go and roll for initiative, and then one person places terrain, then the other, back and forth. Maybe it's eight pieces, maybe it's ten pieces, maybe it's twelve pieces, who knows? And then, you know, you roll off again, or maybe like whoever was lowest, uh, they pick what side they want after, or maybe it's like X Wing, and right away from the very beginning, if I lost initiative and I know I'm going second, whatever, I know I'm going on this side. So you're strategically building your own side. Now, I feel that would be more abusive. There'd be things that'd be pushed too far. Um, I do feel it'd be better to go with that first option where you'd be setting up the t scenario and then whoever went second then picks so that both players are kind of forced to keep things relatively balanced, right? Like, do you put a trench right on that flag to be perfect, knowing that there's a 50-50 chance that the other person's going to be getting it, right? Like, it's, it's things like that, you can, uh, they'd be balanced because they don't know if that's going to be happening or not, if they're going to be actually having it. But more importantly, just that ability to be like, okay, I need to block line of sight because you went all in in guns and I don't want to just be shut off the table on turn two. So I need some sort of defenses here. And so you'd be having that control. Let's link that back in with the scenario now. Well, now that you have that and you have your 8, 9, 10, 12 pieces, whatever it's on there, well, then I feel that you would be able to put those little tokens out there and say, this is the one that I want to be scored by solos. This is the one I want to be scored by units. This is the one I want to be scored by battle engines. And I feel that you would be actually, each player would be have one of each, right? I think that'd be the right way to go. Again, this kind of goes back to the article where they have to play with the number and all that stuff. But again, you just be taking turns. We're like, okay, I'm going to be putting this one here. Okay, well, I'm going to be putting this one on this piece of terrain. And I don't think you'd want to be able to double up on pieces of terrain because then you could like pick one defensive one and put them all like <laughs> in one there. So it has to be all on different ones. 
But then all of a sudden, think of that strategic addition to the game where you're now strategically putting out the terrain based on what you have and your opponent has. And then you're strategically trying to put out these tokens based on what they're doing. Like, okay, well, I see you don't have many solos. So if you want to score this one, boom, right in the middle. Come on, come get some. You're going to be putting yourself at risk. I can kill your one solo and then I can easily go and capture this after, right? You know, you could be doing those things. The negative to this is that the start part of the game, the deployment type stuff, does get longer, right? Because it's not just like, oh, show up the table, roll off, pick your sides, deploy, play the game. You have to do the whole stuff with the scenario and the tokens and, and all those things. So it will add a little bit to your games, but I don't think a whole lot. I would say five minutes you would have to tag on to your game for this. Now... Is that worth it? Is it worth it extending this? I think absolutely. I think that getting to a spot where, first of all, it makes it easier for your TOs, so they want to run more events, but also for people of other communities where they pass by and be like, oh, wow, this just looks really cool because instead of fighting over circles and rectangles, they're fighting over this pieces of terrain you have out there. And then I think people would even take ownership over it. You would think that, think of Guild Ball. Here's again, like, there's lots of things to be learned from other games. In Guild Ball, you have a goal post. And, you know, if this was War Machine, it, you know, it'd be just like, you know, uh, having an objective, having a flag, something that's just there that you kick the ball against. But players would take such pride in their own goal post that they would convert their own, have their own special ones. So they'd have all their players and their goal posts that could go there. Like you could literally just put down a disc and you don't need anything else, right? Functionally, it doesn't matter what it is, but they would take pride in it and want it to be better. In that world where the actual players bring their own, sure, they might just grab their generic mouse pad ones and bring that. But you know, the ones that actually enjoy you know having that investment having that you know kind of show off or like well look what my terrain is they're going to bring something a little bit more flashier right they're going to try and be like look i actually built this and i actually brought this and all of a sudden you're going to be having this very interesting t terrain that's going to be out there this can be more visually appealing and so not only is it now saving this from the to from doing these things but it's just looking better and here's something on top of that as well, is that if it's something where the players are bringing that terrain and doing that part themselves and that option, definitely you're going to see more people want to run events because it's free to them, right? Normally, if a store wants to run a tournament or if Joe Player wants to run a tournament, you have to have a lot of things. You have to have all these mats and clocks and blah, 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 all this stuff. And I tell you, back before the day of like, you know, mouse pad stuff, I would have a dozen huge crates full of terrain that I have to be bringing to every single event. And it's a lot. And for a lot of people wanting to jump in, they'd have to find someone they could borrow it from or something. And it's a real problem. But again, think of that idea of being an X-Wing uh, tournament organizer. You feel like doing it? You got a venue? Great. And in fact, in X-Wing communities, uh, at least the ones around here, they bring their own mats as well. So, you know, it's not like the TO has to walk in with like 30 mats. No, like people just bring them like, oh, how many do you need? Okay, uh, Jimmy, we need yours. Matt, okay, oh, oh, uh, Sarah, yep, let's get those all done. Okay, we have some spares, whatever, put them to the side. You know, like, man, it's so easy for them. And the, here's the thing, when you make making tournaments easy, you have more of them. So it's a win, 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 win. You have more tournaments. They're looking better because people are making their own terrain that they want to be proud of. It's better for the players because it's, you know, everything there is being something where um, they're having more uh, tactical choice in it and what the terrain's going to be and where the scoring elements are going to be. And then we're going to be winning more people over because there's all this awesome stuff going on. They're not blaming it on circles and rectangles. And boy, this is wonderful. So will this happen? I don't know. This is <laughs> probably not. This, this would be a huge change, right? Privateer Press has been very careful over the last decade of making sure that it's always exactly the same, very, very balanced. And I think it's time to take a chance or at the very least invent this as a new format, right? There already looks like they're getting rid of champions. They haven't updated it. Maybe they have reason to, um, but 
I think it's a good time for either taking a real chance in the next steamroller package and making this how the next one works or just putting it out there as a new format. You know, uh, what did he call it again? This was the scenic steamroller. Make this a new format, just like Brawl Machine, and see how it takes off. And if it takes off like Brawl Machine has, great, embrace it and make it a thing. If players hate it, okay, we tried it, whatever, it can go away. So either way, I think there's a lot of merit here, but I also want to hear from you. So if you have some thoughts on this, maybe you think it's a great idea, sure, post it down below. If you think it's an awful idea, that's okay too, but really give me your reasoning why, or maybe your suggestions about how you could be making it better. I always love having these continued conversations after. Uh, last thing I want to do is be thanking my patrons. I want to be thanking my overlords, Daryl and David. I want to be thanking my manipulators, Adrian, Andrew, Dorian, Jordan, uh, Kieran, Sloth Monarchy. And I just recently got a new as a patron here as well, Samuel. So thank you to the pack here. And for everyone else, thanks for watching and we'll catch you later. Bye.